service here because I wanted to come back with this song after I speak a little bit and then close out the night with worship and people can stay as long as they want to worship as long as they want to as long as you guys want to play I don't, I don't care you know it's up to you guys but I just want to quit on this song because I want this song sung at the end of what I'm getting going to teach tonight all right so we can just be seated in his presence get your offerings ready saints and just ask the Lord's blessing this is your last chance to give for this year so if you're willing to give the, you know, if you got that hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar check, make it after Rock Church, okay? And uh, Pastor Brian Bergie, and uh, <laughs> we can bring my table over, please. Let me take ten dollars out of there and put it in there. Thank you, boy. Thanks, Charlie. Welcome home, by the way, man. Good to have you back. Good to see the Nelson family back. Some people, and Tim and some people, it's like they've been gone forever, amen? It's good to have them home. Where's Missy? I know. I didn't miss it. It's hard when you used to have somebody around here all the time. It's like everybody's been gone for so long. We've got such a big crowd here tonight to celebrate New Year's Eve. But I don't want to stop. I really want to talk to you a little bit. Then we're just going to worship. I'm not going to. I only got one page in notes, and one of them is is the whole story about the ten versions. So, uh, what the scriptures in here? But I just want to talk to you a little bit. I'm going to read a little something out of Dr. Shaw's book, if I may. Here, can we get? Are we ready for an offering? Father, thank you for the opportunity to give, Lord. Father, we bless you with it, God. This is our chance. God, this year to plant our last seed for 2014. God, that we may spring forth into 2015. God, I really believe what you're telling me and what's going to happen, God, in, in the church is going to be magnificent. Lord, I thank you. I bless you and I give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You bring your tithes and your offerings forward, saints, and uh can't wait to have our business meeting. Missy's putting the books together. Yes. Yes, this offering this offering will go into that one. No. Sundays will be the second of or the fourth of January, so it'll be next year's offering. Anything anything that goes in today is what counts. Yeah. Tomorrow's the first of 15th, my God, 2015. Hmm? I think, <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit. We've been putting a scripture up here for the last month or so, and I just can't get this scripture off of my mind, can't get it off of my heart. And it's, it's Galatians 6 and 9. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. That word weary there means is to be bad. It's not to be, it's to be weak. And it means don't fail. It means it, it means to fail. 
says, do not fail, do not grow tired, do not do bad things, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And my whole thing right now, saints, I, I, I know the world, and I, I, I'm so tired of hearing bad news. Every time the, the news channels are starting to drive me crazy. Even that girl on Fox News the other day, they're making a big deal out of the way she uncrossed her legs on television. Anybody see that? That, that, that girl is blasting everybody. Now the liberals got a hold of the fact that she uncrossed her legs and you could see stuff. And they're saying she she has sex habits. That little blonde hair girl does all the things. So they're really trying to slam her. And I thought, you know, Lord, every little thing that goes on, people are looking for the bad in it. I'd rather take snooze stories and hear some of the good. All this has been going on with killing these cops and these contracts on cops and all this stuff that's going on over the place. Charles Barkley spoke up. And you all know Charles Barkley has a tendency to be pretty liberal. He's a basketball player. And he spoke up. He said, you all you ones that are wanting to put contracts on the cop, how come you're the first one that calls them when someone breaks in your house? How come you're, you don't want patting them on the back when you need them, but yet you want to kill them, you want to hurt these people, you want to hurt all of them? He said, you know the neighborhood you live in. What do you would think it would be like if you didn't have police officers? What do you think it would be like then? And I thought, thank God, finally somebody's speaking up for good and not evil. Finally, somebody that has a tendency to be negative spoke up for positive. And it was just so good to hear that out of somebody like Barkley come out of his mouth, to hear something like that. Barkley has a tendency to be very liberal. But I thought, thank God that he spoke up like this a little bit and got some good news. But I'm seeing all this, and I'm watching people that that are front runners starting to grow weary in all this stuff. And I know that I know that I know this scripture, God put it in my heart about a month and a half ago, we've been two months ago, we've been putting it up here, is we can't grow tired. We can't grow away from the things that we're doing. If nothing else at all, we've got to stand. We've got to keep pressing forward. We've got to keep doing. We've got, to, we've got to keep moving. We can't have a time now where we sit back and relax. This is not the season. I believe peace will come in the midst of all of our trials, out of all of our battles. I shared here the other night that I got a phone call from one of the young men in the church. It, it, it told me, he said, the minute he decided he was going to run after God, he lost everything. And I started rejoicing. Go and praise God. Amen. He went, did you hear me? I said, I decided this about three weeks ago, and I lost my job. I lost my car. I'm losing my apartment. What are you praising God about? I said, my God, you're going to have a Job story. He went, huh? What are you? I said, do me a favor. He wanted some advice. I said, read Job and call me Monday. He didn't call me. I said, read Job and call me. I said, when you understand what Job went through, and then when you get to verse 42, don't go right to it. When you get to verse 42, you're going to understand why I started rejoicing. Because he called me and said, did you believe I have a call of God in my life when you prophesied that over me? I said, the question is, is not whether I believed it or not. The question is, do you believe it? If God told me to say it, whether I believe it or not, I'm going to be obedient. But the question is, do you believe it? He said, well, I don't know now. So I'm going to go after him and lose everything. I said, but you're going to gain the whole world. If you follow after the things of God, then all other things, seek ye first the kingdom. Then what? All See, and, and, and we forget that message. Don't grow weary in what you're doing. Don't grow tired. Don't grow back. And again, it says this again in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3.13. It says, but ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And that weary there means don't deny what you're doing. Stop denying who you are. That's what that weary means. Don't grow denial. Don't start denying where you stand and who you stand for and the righteousness you have. That's why I want to come back to this song at the end. We can't grow weary in what God's got planned for this house, saints. I know there's a block party coming up on the 1st of February. I mean, 21st of February. We're doing a block party. Not sure what block it is yet. Didn't even know that this existed. But there's supposed to be a black section 
a, a neighborhood in Tarpon Springs. I didn't know that. I, well, that's where we're heading. That's right where we're heading up in that area. It's supposed to be real heavy crime and drugs and all that stuff. They've already got the approval of the city. It's between two parking lots that we're going to be able to go in. They won't block the street off, but it'll be parking lots, paved parking lots. They're going to let us go in and have our block party. And these pastors are starting to wonder, what's Rock Church's leverage in this? What are they doing this for? And Pastor Bob says, well, if you'll notice, they don't come up under the banner of Rock Church because of that reason. They started a separate ministry under the name Proclaim, so everybody doesn't think Rock Church is coming up here to steal sheep. We have got to get saints. Pastor Barry gave me a, um, and Tracy gave me a, uh, an ornament for my tree, and they came over last night for dinner, and they told me it was dated 2007. It was brand new. I mean, there wasn't something they just found somewhere and threw it at me, you know. But they said it was purposely, when he saw that, he picked it up because it's when we first started Roy really hooking up together here, right? Is that what you said? And we really started having our talks and meeting together and all this kind of stuff. So it meant something, and it, it, then it meant more to me than that than what it was just the fact that it came from Pastor Barry and Pastor Tracy. It meant a lot more to me because it started symbolizing when we were starting to make our shift into the kingdom first mentality in this house. Because if we seek ye first the kingdom, then every dream that's in here, your dreams that you have for this house, will come to pass in this place. Now I'm preaching a kingdom message here, but I'm telling you right now, this is one time I'm preaching to Rock Church. I'm preaching to you as members of Rock Church and visitors and friends of this ministry. I'm preaching to you because it's about who we are. It's about what we're to do. We can't grow backwards. we got to keep going through. Let me, I don't know where to go first. I'm trying to decide which one I want to do, but here. Uh, let me read Matthew. Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. You all know the story. You know the story well. And this is what got me, because it's, 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 in this, it's in this book I'm going to read from Dr. Shaw. It's her December 25th lesson, read at Christmas morning. We had a Christmas Eve service. I, I, I just decided the last moment to go ahead and be here, because it's our regular church service. I didn't want people showing up, visitors showing up for a regular church service and the church being closed on Christmas Eve. So we came up. It was just Kim, myself, and Catherine. And we had church. We, we really just sat in the back there and just talked. And we, we really just had church. We just talked about the kingdom. We talked about uh, the story of Christmas, the true heart of Christmas and, 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 and all that. We just really just sat. We read the Christmas story and we just talked a little bit. And, and, uh, and part of this came up in my heart here about what, what, where God is heading for the church. And this was started getting birthed in me more and more at Christmas night, Christmas Eve. And all through the holiday, the Christmas season, when the, the young man who called me was TJ, was Missy's boy TJ. He's the one that called me. And uh, uh, just the other day, I had a word from Missy that her family was going to start coming back. And I'm in my office, and I called her. I said, I got a word from God for you. I'm over here praying for you and Bill. And I see your family coming back in. Don't, don't be quick not to accept their apologies. It's not easy when you get hurt. Come on. You can accept people. So that's your family. I said, but don't, don't be, be quick to accept them. Be ready to accept them. I said, now, don't worry. That, that, that warning is always going to be there until trust is built back up. Come on. When you lose trust in somebody, it's, harder, it's easier to forgive than it is to trust again. Come on. And that, it's going to take time, but be ready to forgive. And it was two days later, three days later, he called me. And, and he said, if I decide to go this route, Pastor, I want to come back. I said, well, read Job to say if you still want to come back. Because I, I, the whole time I was waiting for him to ask me for something. Send me some money. Help me pay my car payment. Help me pay my rent payment. And nada. Not a worry. He never asked me for a thing. And I thought, well, thank God. Maybe he really was seeking advice. So hopefully he'll call me. Hopefully he's having a hard time reading Job. And he'll call me tomorrow morning or something. You know, uh, I have a hard time reading Job, too. So anybody else? Say amen. Yeah. Any, any, anybody else ever feel like they've been Joe, they have been Joe one time or another in their life? Right. Let me read this to you. It says, Matthew 25, 1 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. 
they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Verse 26, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and, and, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not, not so, lest there be enough for us. And you go and rather go to sell them and go buy for yourself. And they went out to buy, and the bridegroom came, and they were ready and went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore ye, verse 13, and know neither the day cometh nor the hour which the Son of Man cometh unto you. And we know the story. And, and the thing that I've been seeing and, and, and pressing in for and even preaching through the secret place is our relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit personally. I believe in, I am more local church than most pastors ever dream of being. I believe in the local church. I believe a relationship corporately is important. But there's nothing more important than my one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ, with the Trinity. There's nothing more important that I have that time with God. I've got to have it. I've got to have it. And what I'm learning to do is I'm learning through this book, teaching and preaching it and studying it, and I'm reading Dutch Sheets' book right behind it, The Glory of His Presence. As I'm teaching in this one, it's just blowing my mind that I'm learning I can live in the anointing. I don't have to leave it. I don't have to go tarry for the Holy Ghost. I'm starting to understand how the disciples had the anointing to go up and pray for people on, on a spur of a moment. They didn't have to tarry. The man at the temple, they didn't say, wait till we come out of the temple, or won't you go into the temple with us? They met him where he where his need was needed. They met the need on the spot. Silver and gold have I not, but what I got. Oh, come on, church. What do you have to give? And that's what and that's what I've seen in this parable of the, of the of the virgins right here. See, all ten of them went out prepared. They really did. Ten of them went with their lamps full. Five were wise and thinking, "What if he tarries? What if he doesn't come and our lamps burn out? What if he doesn't come to the last hour and our lamps burn out? We got to have oil." And they brought vessels with them. They brought a refreshing of oil. Come on, this can preach. They brought a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. They brought a refreshing of oil with them. That wasn't just what they had in their lamps, and they turned it on and burnt there. It's funny. The other day we were at the house, and we were lighting our candles all up, and one of the candles went out. And right away my first thinking was, did I have juice for it? Were there batteries in my house? Come on, yeah. How many of you have been in a situation and was there enough juice inside of you to get you through the situation? Was there enough charge in your charger to get you through where you had to go to? Did you know the Holy Spirit well enough to call him up? See, we ain't got to call him down no more, saints. He's down, amen? We got to call him out. We got to release him. We got to learn to release him. And what they did is they had oil, which represents the Spirit of God. They had an extra vials or containers or vessels of oil to keep their lamp burning. That's why I want to come back to this burning ones at the end of this end of this end of this message, because you got to keep yourself prepared. We know not when that. And let me read Doctor Shaw's book to you. I love these things. I I. I I, I mark them all up. I read them very, very faithfully. By the way, starting Sunday morning, the offerings will not be out after we collect them. They're going to be counted right there on the spot in the back so our counters don't have to stick around for hours after church to count. Amen. 
They're going to take it right back there, and they're just going to count it, and everything will be copied and all later. So though you own account ministry can say, thank you, Jesus. We're going to do it right back there so you don't have to miss church. You can sit right back in Missy's office. You'll be able to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll, you'll be sure where you'll be able to lock it, put it in there and lock it up, and Missy will come in the next day or take it home and lock it in the safe and do all the copying and all that. You guys will sign off so that we know what amount was in there. Amen? So I just want you to know that. So a lot of people sometimes wait till the end, but it won't be up here at the end. It's already going to be counted. And I'll make that announcement again Sunday. Make sure I get something that says that, please. Okay, December 25th. The bridegroom is coming. Be ready. Matthew 25, 6. Here's the cry. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom come. Go out and meet him. Okay, you ready? From your childhood, you have known this familiar parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. All ten were holy women who kept their lives clean and lived celibacy. And all ten were in the journey, in the journey to meet their beloved. I said they went forth to meet him. All ten went out to meet him. All ten of these good women had lamps, and all their lamps were burning brightly through the darkest hours from twilight to midnight. All ten of them got weary along their long hours of waiting and hoping, and soon the excitement began to fade away. Hello? That's one of the things I worry about in the house. We get excited about events anymore. We still do, but we lose some of that in between our events. We kind of lose it, a little bit of it in between our events. And this is and, and those law moments is when the enemy can really come in and start stealing and get strongholds in our lives. This is the kind of thing I, I'm starting to picture more and more in my heart. We've got to stop being the mentality of an event church. Amen? All right. Along the way, where was I? And the lights, because the journey was so long, the night was so dark, and the lights in all the homes along the way have gone out because of the lateness of the hour. All ten of them sat down to rest a while, and while resting... They all fell asleep, and suddenly, somebody say suddenly, a great joy was heard from an angelic host who welcomed me to the earth when I was a baby in a manger in Bethlehem, crying, Behold, the bridegroom come, go out and meet him. The first time this was proclaimed, it said, Behold, I bring you great tidings and great joy, which to be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And the sign shall be unto you. You shall find the babe in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And they believed and said, Let us go now and see this thing which come past, which the Lord had made known to us. And, the, and they made haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. That's Luke 2, 10 through 16. When I came to earth as a baby, this is, this is the Lord. If you understand this book at all, she died and went to heaven, and God sent her back. He said, go tell them. He sent me back to come tell you. Is that what it says? Go tell you. So this is, this is Dr. Shaw. The Lord's talking to her. So when I came to earth as a baby, in the darkness of night, and when I come again, it will be the time when men have become so evil that they have covered the world with darkness as great as the days of Noah. Only a few knew of my coming then because the religious world was sleeping. They didn't want their comforts to be disturbed. They were not ready. And many will not be ready when I come as the bridegroom for my bride. Some who think they're ready will be shocked to find that during this coming time of testing, their lights have gone out. These are the foolish virgins. The wise virgins have brought an extra supply of oil. The oil can be likened to the Holy Spirit. They had the double portion of the glory of God in their lives. They had the double portion of the glory of God in their lives. They were ready for the launching into the bridegroom's mansion. Every rocket is jettisoned by fuel. The fuel that will rapture you is the fuel of the glory of the Holy Spirit in your life. And in very bold letters, she wrote, always make sure you have a full tank. 
and this is this is the story that I've been getting over and over. When I read this Christmas night, Christmas morning, I I jumped out of my skin. I was saying, Oh my God, the truth of this. It's hitting me. I've already had the ten virgin things in my mind about the oil to preach for this night. And then when I read this, I thought, my God, now I see why it's all tying together in my heart. Why I'm starting to see this church has become a, um, I said a minute ago, what? Event church. We, uh, and when we are, my God, we, we, we go over the top. Our block parties are over the top. Our Christmas play this year, best it's ever been. Uh, the uh, Cafe Italiano was fabulous. The dance thing, what was it? The, the performing arts thing we did in the last two years, that was over the top. Our arts in the back and, and, and the things being sold and given, our worship teams, our, we're, we are a great events motivated church. But it's the law parts that worries me. Now, I'm not saying let's keep it up here. Come on. There's nothing long, wrong with rest. Sometime this spring, my wife and I are taking a good vacation because I need a rest. There's nothing wrong with rest. You all know how I feel about family. I've had people out all Christmas about family, and I'm so happy and so tickled. If my family was anywhere but north, I'd be with them. They would come here, I'd take time off, but I ain't going up there in the snow and the cold. Ain't happening. So I have no problem with people taking off with family. You guys know better. I, God bless you, go with family. Uh, family to me is very important, but being filled with God and not as a time just to rest, but you still, the excitement, the, the heart, the Holy Ghost must always be flowing. There must be a willing in your heart to minister to somebody on a touch, to touch somebody on a touch. Right now, we got Brother Wayne doing a lot better, by the way. He's doing, I talked to him last night, and he, he texted me this morning, and we went over and saw him Sunday after church, and uh, he's, doing, he's doing better. They, they, they've got him on medicine to, to take care of all the clotting and all that. He's on his blood thinners now, and yeah, unless God does a miracle, he's going to have to have a couple surgeries yet, and and all this, he's just having a hard time with strength. Keep him in prayer. Brother Wayne's never been sick. And when he got sick, he got slammed. And we got to be careful to keep him lifted up now. we got to keep him lifted up, make sure we encourage him and pray for him. Uh, we, don't, we don't want a lot of people showing up. Send him a card. And Brother Wayne's always sending little cartoons and all this kind of stuff out to people. Send him a little card. Send him something to bless him. That's all. Just letting him know you think calling, texting. They don't want a lot of people showing up because he's exhausted. He tires himself out a whole lot. But just bless him. Do something to bless him. Because I, what I worry about sometimes is somebody with Br Brother Wayne's stamina his whole life getting hit so hard, I worry about the enemy trying to bring discouragement. And that's our job. That's part of the thing I'm talking about, being filled. When, we're, when we have these times where we, we get, I don't know, of a whole lot of things we have to do, and there's there's always something. We've got a ladies cooking this weekend. We got there's always little things going on everywhere. We got prayer. We got uh, well, we'll be starting our our counseling classes back up. And there's always something going on, but I'm talking about the bigger events. And when we start sitting back and relaxing, that's good. But make it a time of filling. Make it a time that you're preparing your vessel. Don't make it a time where you've dumbed out on everything, or you just freaked out on everything. You know, just you get you sat around and, and became a, a couch potato, eating potato chips, and drinking coke. I mean, come on. Make it a time where you're, you're you're preparing your heart. Study your word. Don't forget your word. Get into worship. Our worship, even sometimes here lately. I know we've been busy in the busyness, but our worship has taken a little dive off here. I, I feel for our worship team sometimes. I feel like they're uh, up here trying to perform to get you to open your mouth and move a little bit. Don't forget to worship. You can't get a better Holy Ghost filling than to worship. Fill your lamps up, saints. This little season, it's fill our lamps up. There's a building over here that's vacant, Trisha. Did you know that? 
they moved out. Barclay. And our landlord doesn't own it. And we are keeping, we have got flyers out. I'm going to tell you right now, if that building goes up for sale, I'm going to do all I can. Sell, steal, no. <laughs> Everything I have to do to buy that building. And I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to give that one back, and I'm going to keep this one. This will be our classrooms, our bookstore, and our coffee house. Can you see Oldsmar having a Friday and a Saturday night coffee house with jam sessions? Every Friday and Saturday night where you, where, where you can come in here with a live band playing, you want to buy a cup of coffee and even dance under God's word, God's music. I think it would be great to have that type of setting in here. I'm going to let the young adults and the youth run it so they can have all the finances. After they pay the bills, all the finances they make will go to their mission trips. Every, every dime profit will go right back to them once we get the rent paid. I think it would be cool, amen? I think it would be a good thing that we can have this. So let's, let's believe God for that building. Let's start believing God. That'll be our sanctuary. All our nurseries and all will move over here, and we'll keep this set up for that purposes. But that will be our sanctuary and restrooms. Amen? Let's just start believing God for the miracle. That's Maybe that's why we could never get anything else. If people had vision we were going to take this shop center, so let's start believing it. Amen? But that's available. But listen, that doesn't come by laying back. It doesn't come by, 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 by dropping off. You've got to keep yourself full. You've got to stay charged up. You've got to keep your lamps burning. Can I have the worship team come back up, please? Told you I wasn't going to be long. You know, I'm starting to learn. I don't have to preach the everlasting message to get my point across. Listen, you got my, I got my point across here tonight. I want you to stay charged up. We're preaching... If you haven't bought that book yet, Secret of Secret Place, get it. And the other one is, what's that she's book called? Comfort, Glory of His Presence. Is that what it's called? The Glory of His Presence. So that is another book. I'm going to tell you, when I finish this other one, I'm going to start preaching Dutch Sheets book. So let's get ready. Yes, sir. Well, let's go. Let's pray right now. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to pray for Martin, and we're going to pray for Brother Wayne, and, and Tim's home with his family. He, for, he forgot, huh? The pleasure of his presence. Company. Of pleasure, pleasure of his company. It's a great book, Saints. It's a great book. If I remember the name, I'd be and be better. Amen. Father, yes, ma'am. Father, we come to you tonight with all these prayer requests. Father, for Martin, for Brother Wayne and Diane, God, for Kathy's mom up in Baltimore, Lord. God, we just ask God that you move on this New Year's Eve. Father, heal your church. Father, those that are sick and ill that need miracles, God. God, let there be miracles, Father. We pray for my pastor, Pastor when, Lord God, that you touch her physical body and heal her, Lord God, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. God, touch Pastor Lou even tonight, God. Let your spirit so dwell and come alive in him, Father, that everyone he speaks to and every hand that he touches, God, people fall out of the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. God, we just ask for your blessing, even as we worship to you tonight. This song, God, we're the burning ones. Father, I pray that you keep us burning. Keep us afire, God, as we provide, God, our, our abilities to seek you. We know you'll provide the oil. Now we bless you tonight, God, as we just cry out to you. Fill us up tonight, Lord. Set us afire. It's in Jesus' name. Let everybody say. Now let's worship the Lord, God. You're released anytime you want to go. You're more than welcome, and you can stay here till midnight, whatever you want to do. God bless you.
of our lives. For